record on. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill. Almost forgot. All right, um, some announcements. First of all, we are recording the meeting. Um, I wanna give Paul a chance to go ahead right now. And I think we're all interested in hearing the updates on COVID. So uh, go ahead, Paul. Well, again, there's there's uh, bad news and, and some good news. Uh, the I thought that the numbers uh, last week were just uh, incredible, uh, but uh, the numbers uh, a week later, ending this this past Friday, uh, are are much much worse still. Um, many areas have doubled what they were the week before. Uh, Cape Charles, for example, had 40, what, 45 new cases last week, 44 maybe, uh, the, um, which was uh, the most they ever had before was 15, but this past week they had 88 uh, new <laughs> cases in Cape Charles. Uh, oh, and the, uh, the county had uh, 211 new cases, again, almost twice what they had uh, the week before. Uh, that puts Cape Charles and, and uh, Northampton County and Accomack County in the same category as far as their per capita rates are concerned as uh, Virginia Beach and uh, up in the D.C. area uh, and, and uh, just, you know, just about anything else, uh, everywhere else you can imagine. So uh, the, the, the rates are still incredibly high. Uh, in these areas, they don't show any sign of slowing down yet. But uh, if you look at the uh, Northeast states like New York and Massachusetts, uh, I looked at their curves and they, several of them topped out on uh, January 10th. Uh, so they reached their, the curves reached their peak and now they're dropping uh, fairly quickly. Um, so the, as was uh, predicted by many, the, the surge had a very steep slope uh, up, but it's probably going to follow a steep slope down. Um, and uh, so if you look at when the, the, the slope really started going up in those northeast states, uh, it was about December 15th. And on January 10th, they peaked out and now they're dropping. So a little less than a month. Uh, we're maybe a week behind them or, or maybe a little more. Uh, so if we follow the same course, uh, you know, we hopefully will see our rates uh, start dropping in another week or two. Uh, and, uh, and then by uh, late February, they should be uh, down uh, fairly low again. Uh, the I think the numbers that I quoted a while ago are probably a big underestimate of what the true number of cases is out there, because there are a lot of people, like Jim mentioned a while ago, that have been sick with an upper respiratory infection, not very sick, but uh, and some people are asymptomatic and have very mild cases. So, and, and these people, the testing is not easy. Uh, to obtain, and, and, and a lot of these people aren't getting tested. I've got two of my children uh, had similar stories. They don't live locally, but uh, they, they were exposed. They had um, mild symptoms. They didn't have to get tested, and they didn't. Uh, so I think that what we're seeing is a, a big undercount. Uh, and, uh, and that means the percentage of the population that's going to end up uh, being infected with Omicron, and that's, Omicron makes up 98% of the cases now in the United States, um, uh, or is, is, is huge, uh, which is going to result in significant, uh, quote, herd immunity. Um, uh, although, like I've said before, immunity is not an absolute term. Uh, the other good thing about it is that uh, the death rate has gone up some, but not anywhere near what has gone up with the previous variants. Uh, and the hospitalizations, while they're quite large and, and many hospitals are overwhelmed, uh, but the vast majority of those cases are from the people are, are among people that aren't fully uh, immunized. So 
Um, it, you know, the um, if, if you've been fully immunized, uh, the chances of getting very sick from this are low, not zero. Uh, so you still should avoid getting it. Uh, and um, uh, one other thing I want to mention is the, the issue on masks. Uh, the uh, there's a big misconception out there in the last uh, couple of weeks that cloth masks are useless. Uh, you know, you see people saying, "Well, masks, cloth masks are out." Um, well, cloth. The truth is, the cloth masks aren't nearly as good. It's been shown as surgical masks, and they aren't as good as the N95 masks. But not cloth masks aren't useless. Uh, they're still better than nothing. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just that you really shouldn't count on them anymore. You really should be getting surgical masks, which are very cheap, easy to get. Uh, tons, tons of places are handing them out for free. Um, and uh, so uh, use, use a surgical mask when you go out in public, uh, if you can. Uh, and, uh, but cloth masks are better than nothing. So, some people say, well, there's no point in masking because cloth masks aren't any good. Well, <laughs> you know, they're better than nothing. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Um, Paul, uh, just, just to mention, Paul mentioned about 88, uh, no, no, 88 people last week and 40 some the week before. So the off season permanent population of the Cape Charles area is around 1,000 people or so. So that's about eight. Eight to nine percent of the people in one week came down positive with COVID, and if you combine the last two weeks, more like twelve percent. So it's it's definitely making its moves in the area. The other the question I have for you, Paul. Um, last week I heard a couple of real short reports that there's a new variant that they're calling the French variant, um, obviously starting to spread in France. Have you heard anything about that? No, I haven't. Uh, I don't have any knowledge about that. Okay. Anybody else with comments or questions? We're going to talk some about this in regards to when we meet again in person. But anybody have any questions for Paul or, or Dr. Clark about uh, the current COVID situation? Well, I noticed that the, the first uh, executive order by the governor Governor is to rescind the mask mandate. Saw that. Actually, that surprised me because I thought that was done last summer. Because, oh. you know, I was able to go in after that announcement without a mask into Walmarts and. No, no, no. She's talking, she's talking about the schools. Oh, the schools. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't mean don't wear a mask. It means it's not ma not mandatory. If people think they need to wear a mask or have their children wear a mask or teachers need to wear a mask, by all means, they should. Any other questions or um, comments for Paul or Dr. Clark? Dr. Clark, you want to speak to anything? Well, we are seeing patients that have had their boosters and they're still getting COVID and people that have had COVID before and they're getting it a second time. So just be careful. Yeah. So it's not what's been termed <clears throat> virus of the unvaccinated. So it's also spreading among the vaccinated and the boosted. All right. Um, we'll speak a little more about this, how in regards to how it's affecting uh, future online, future online or in-person meetings. I want to get back to that. Um, Invisible History Project, Mehdi, you have, you have an update on that? I know you've been uh, doing some things. By the way, for everybody, I don't know if it's the proper term to use, but a day late, happy Mar Dr. Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. Well, we had the meeting of the interview committee yesterday, and we we have resuming activity on the interviews, and and I have talked with Rich uh, 
uh, with Jim Ritz about, about the publication of a brochure and we are going to publish a brochure so that we can disseminate the information to the community because this project has only been known by word of mouth so far. But we are gearing up for a busy season of interviews, yeah. Excellent. I know there's already other committee members with uh, Mehdi. Do you, anybody want to speak up or add in to what Mehdi has stated? Okay. Um, Bill, the art yes. raffle. Not, uh, that's not somebody's name, art raffle. That's the thing that Bill is actually managing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well uh, the art raffle is coming along. Um, We've got a commitment uh, from, from uh, Thelma Peterson for another print. And uh, the committee got together for a half hour yesterday and we all have assignments. Um, I'm very optimistic that we'll have eight to 10 pieces of art. Um, and Jim Rich has joined the team. He's, he's a good marketeer. Um, so uh, I think we're going to have a very good project within, uh, you know, for fundraising in the early spring, if not late winter. We have to decide on when it's smart to do this. When is Easter this year? Is it in April or is it March? I'm, I'm think, you know, I'm just trying to line up maybe this. 17 this, April. Uh, okay. I'm thinking trying to line this up the raffle up around the Easter time, not on Easter, but, um, you know, like maybe Good Friday or the day after Easter or something. Would that be? Well, the, the when, when we launch the, the raffle, we'll, you know, it'll be a number of weeks that we'll be actively selling tickets. Right. Um, right. So, um, yeah, that's a good idea. And we'll, we'll, we'll put that in the, in the, in the meat grinder when we come up uh, with the program. Okay, and I know you were looking for a local, local sponsor or a local group that would allow us to display some well, of the artwork. Well, uh, Bill Murphy had suggested it, that uh, maybe we can get in an art center uh, a corner to display. Um, so maybe one or more. Uh, but it's, it's one thing about the art as opposed to the golf cart. It, the pieces are very portable. Uh, yep. That's good news and bad news. Uh, we, we'd have to protect them <laughs> and make sure they're safe. Uh, but but there, there's an opportunity to uh, advertise in a number of venues because we'll have multiple uh, art pieces. But yep. uh, we'll work that out. But as long as we have Murphy on the team, uh, ideas will just come up every other day. So I'm, <laughs> I'm delighted. Bill Murphy, you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, that 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 surprises me. I appreciate the, the the compliment, but I don't know about the good ideas. But uh, I am going to go by if, if Marianne's in this afternoon. I've got to go out. I'm going to stop in and talk with her about uh, maybe having drawing there, and, uh, having them as a sponsor to sell tickets, and maybe even uh, seeing if she can help us pick up a couple more pieces. So I'm going to either see her this afternoon or the next day she's in. Yeah, the, the other part of this is we want to give some advertisement to the donors. So the people that are donating the artworks or the art studios or stores or whatever, what have you, um, we want to give them a little publicity too. So uh, as, as we start gathering these art pieces, we don't want to just show a picture and say, hey, you can win these. We want to attribute it to the artist and to the art studios that are donating these for nothing for us to put up for a raffle. Absolutely. I want to announce, I think this is a record for a long time. There are 20 participants in our meeting. I see that. That's great. Hopefully uh, we'll get same type of turnout mm -hmm. when we start talking about in-person meetings again. Mm -hmm. um, all right, this is an open discussion area. And I just want to report to everybody. Oh, wait a minute. One more thing I want to bring up.
Um, actually, had a call from Paul a little bit ago, and uh, the YMCA pledges. I see that John Burtis is here, and uh, I do want to mention that. And John, do you want to speak to that real quick? I, I do. I just got the uh, report from the Y, uh, included the year in statistics, and uh, I don't have the most current list of our members. I want to correlate that, but we have had 20 members participate, which includes some former members. Uh, the total of the members only uh, from our club is $37,900, and the average gift is about $1,900. The gifts have ranged from $100 to $5,000, and I encourage those of you who have not participated, which is about half the club, to get in at some level. It's a lot easier to get other donors when you say the whole club that's pushing for this is behind it. Of course, our club gave $5,000, also pledged $5,000. So between the pledges of members, friends and so on of members so far, which have not really been pushed at all, and the club, we have uh, 50, I'm sorry, 47,000 and some change. So we're about halfway there uh, in the club uh, as far as membership, and we're about halfway there in the pledge. But really been kind of waiting to, to get some finality from the membership and then go to the non-members who I know and others know that we think we can wring about $50,000 out of over a period of time. So. But the Y is doing well, the membership is good, the revenues of the Y are good. So as far as operating, it's doing fine. Um, I'm actually glad Paul called me a little bit ago because I realized I had, I put on my pledge sheet and sent it in. And I put in there that I would like to make a yearly payment due in January. And I realized when Paul called me, I haven't heard anything from them that says, okay, here's the amount you pledged. And, could you please remit? So I'll I just up. yeah, I'll check on that, Chuck. We I, I'm not sure when they actually do it at the end of the month. I don't know when they do it, but this has been a question a couple of times before. But I'll follow up. That they've been in the prior years. They, they they seem to remind me they must think I'm a deadbeat. I don't know why that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've had this question before, so I'll I'll, I'll check on. Okay. <laughs> well, I did shoot Nancy an email just okay, after Paul fine. called me um, because I do want to remit, but I need an address of where to send it. You know, right. so. Just bring the cash by my office, Chuck, and we'll take care of it. Sure. Oh, that's how you get rich, huh? <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be up to about seventy thousand dollars in donations. There's been a little, a little shrinkage, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so if you have uh, pledged amounts, thank you very much. If you want to pledge a little bit more, thanks again. If you haven't pledged, you're probably going to hear from uh, some of the committee um, sometime soon to ask you if you please do it. Let's really work on 100% um, commitment from the membership, the active membership of uh, pledging something to yeah, the yeah. Chuck, Chuck, the challenge was was fifteen hundred dollars. Seal and I gave five. Several people, other people have given five. That's the most common gift, but they have ranged from a hundred to five thousand dollars. So, uh, even a hundred, you know, from everybody would help. So, yep, absolutely. Chuck, okay. I, I didn't. I, I, I should have told you. I didn't want you to give me away like that. I'm really late. I'm <laughs> making my calls. Um, the um, I got an email from John that I was too embarrassed to answer till I'd made my calls. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I, so I got really, going on it this morning. That's the best thing that's happened to me today that I put some pressure on strong people. Right <laughs> Write that down. <clears throat> All right. Well, um, again, everybody who's given, thank you very much. Um, everybody who is um, making the commitment to give. We'll look for John Burris to come up with um, an, at least an address of where to send our, <laughs> our funds. Um, and let's go ahead and make it 100% contribution. All right. Um, I want to get back now to in-person meetings um, and let you know the board has been looking at this very strongly of when we want to start getting back uh, together and what the conditions will have to be in order for us to meet in person again. <clears throat> and um, we're still kind of finalizing that. We're not looking right now to start getting back together, but we want to have it all ready to go what the conditions should be when we think it's possible to get back together. 
Um, Roberta has been very understanding and uh, she wants us back. She's made that clear, but she also has made clear that she understands right now with the conditions out there um, why we aren't meeting in person. So there's no pressure coming from the coffee house of, you know, either meet or uh, go find someplace else. None of that is happening. She's going to welcome us back when we're ready. Um, we're trying to put together a sort of statement of what we think is required to allow us to get back together in person. At the same time, ask three very simple questions to members. Um, we're kind of thinking we're going to do that with telephone calls to each individual member. And I want you to understand with the questions that are asked, it doesn't mean that the very next Tuesday we're going to be meeting. It means we're preparing and we're trying to get your input on how you feel about it when we should get back, what the conditions should be out there. So they're not complicated questions. They're really, two of them are only yes, yes no questions. And one of them is sort of an open-ended question to allow the membership to say whatever they want about the situation and when you would feel comfortable. Um, no, I think the board right now does not feel comfortable meeting in person just yet. But hopefully what, with what Paul just announced uh, in talking about this, we start seeing that steep curve downward where the infection rate really starts to drop. Um, and then we can get serious about um, putting it out there of meeting together um, in person again. Um, now the meals are kind of a ticklish situation Paul, I don't want to say anything wrong, so I'd rather you kind of speak to how the meal part of this is going to work. So can, can you do that real quick? Well, um, Randy could do it just as well. Um, the, um, the, I don't know if Randy's here or not. Anyway, I'm, listening. Yeah, the, I'm uh, listening. Do you want to talk about it? No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I may learn something. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think the board has pretty much decided that when we do uh, start meeting in person again at the coffee house, uh, that uh, we will start uh, as of that date, uh, charging every member uh, for the meals again, just as we uh, have always done in the past, unless a person specifically requests non-participating status because they don't want to be subject to the expense of the meals. Uh, they don't feel they can afford it or something. Um, so um, uh, right now you're going to be uh, uh, the uh, sent uh, invoices for the $95 in dues um, that you were have been getting the last many quarters um, since we haven't been meeting in person. Um, and uh, but when when we do start having in person meetings again with meals, we're only going to do that when we feel it's safe. Um, and then uh, we want everybody to start coming back and participating and having a meal uh, like in the past. And uh, uh, so uh, with the meal portion uh, was one hundred and five dollars uh, per quarter. So if there's five weeks left in the quarter, we'll take five over 13, which is the number of weeks in an average quarter, uh, and, and times 105 and, and, and uh, bill the, quote, participating uh, members uh, for that amount uh, for meals uh, so that we don't uh, it'll relieve Randy of the paperwork of having to keep track of you know, what person came and ate this meal and, uh, you know, and having to bill all that separately. Um, so that's, that's the plan. Um, could you speak to the part about what the average cost per meal is going to be yeah. with that? Yeah, the, the participating, uh, thanks for asking that. The, uh, the, the amount that we've been charging for meals, which is $105 a quarter, is quite a bit below uh, what uh, Roberta is now charging for meals. Roberta is charging us $14 a person per meal. 
Um, and if you take $105 and divide it by 13, you get about $8. Uh, so you're getting a great deal uh, by uh, still participating in the meals. Uh, particularly if you come regularly, which we hope you all will. And um, the, uh, uh, the club will, of course, lose money uh, doing that. Uh, but we, we have built up a pretty good amount of money in our, uh, quote, operating budget over the past couple of years when we haven't been meeting and, um, in person. And uh, so the, 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 the club can afford to take a bit of a hit and uh, for a couple of quarters. And uh, we want everybody to be to participate and to uh, take advantage of this great deal and get in the habit of coming back for meals. Um, and then we'll talk about what we have to do with the due structure uh, at the beginning of the next fiscal year. Randy, do you want to? Uh expand on any of that? I think Paul touched everything. I, I just want to emphasize the, the idea behind all this is participation. Yes. Uh, do this in such a way that, uh, that we have as full participation as possible. So we'll just have to wait and, and watch the numbers and uh, use our best judgment. Absolutely, yes. I mean, that, that is the primary goal. We want to see you. We want to see everybody in person again. Um, Zoom is okay, but I think we're all getting a little tired of it. And we really do want to see you in person. So please, once um, we get to the point where it's safe to do so, and we're ready to look at in-person meetings, please come because we really do want to sit down and yak and tell stories and lies with you. Um, David, do you want to add anything to that? You're you muted, mute. David. Uh, no, I, I think you've covered it. Uh, you know, I, th I think it's good to, uh, we, we need to get back to normal, uh, as close to normal as we can uh, when it's safe to do so. So I'm glad that the board is uh, was working on that and I appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. All right. And we really appreciate Paul's updates and Dr. Clark's uh, keeping us up to date on, on the situation out there and when it's safe to uh, start thinking about get, getting back together. We're gonna rely on their opinions pretty heavily. So um, let's hope for the best in the future. Let's hope for a quick turnaround and seeing as fast as we went up on the infections on the other side, we start seeing it go the other way just as fast. Um, and then let's all get back hopefully to what used to be called normal um, and seeing each other in person. Um, all right. I want to open up the floor right now and allow anybody to speak up, speak your mind, any new ideas for fundraising, for having fun. Go ahead, Bill Murphy. Well, this might be a little bit off topic and I'm gonna add to it a little bit more with happy dollars, but uh, I just want you guys and ladies, everybody to see, you see my new shirt <laughs> I'm wearing today? I, yeah. I think most of you can clearly see that's the uh, the logo for the West Virginia Mountaineers. So I have a nice new shirt that I'm wearing today that I'm <laughs> going to actually wear when I go out a little later this afternoon. Thanks to my good friend, John Burtis. Uh, yeah. We had a little bet a while back uh, on the Virginia Tech West Virginia game, and, and obviously I lost. Uh, <laughs> so the, the deal was whoever lost would wear the other team's jersey or shirt. Uh, I was hoping to be able to wear it to a in-person meeting, which I will do when we first meet. But uh, anyway, so I wanted to let make sure John could see that, that I am wearing it today, like I said. And uh, I will be wearing it around because my wife told me when I tried it on the other day, 
She said, that's a nice looking shirt. I said, yeah, but look, it's, it's West Virginia. And she laughed. She said, well, I got to tell you, it looks better than all those ratty old Virginia Tech shirts you have. Later. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, thank you, John. It, it's been fun and you will see the shirt. I'll be wearing it. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. And so, All right. Did he get right. you the right size and everything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two XL. Right. <laughs> I think Bill needs to back up so we can see the whole thing because it's not doing it justice. So, uh, oh, okay. I, I, I have my pants on so I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Let's see. There we go. That, that pretty clear there, right? You can get your hand out of the way. <laughs> yeah. There you there go. We yeah, go. we got it now. Long <laughs> sleeve. So you got to get him. You got to get him a uh, short sleeve one for the summer so he can wear it all summer. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I'm, I'm hoping, I think it's September 24th, they're going to play again in Blacksburg. So I'm really hoping to turn the tables and, and purchase him a nice Virginia Tech shirt this coming <laughs> fall, but we'll see. <laughs> so, uh, Chuck, if I, if I may, uh, and Bill, I appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> a couple of things. Uh, Bill and I met to talk about this. And it might surprise a lot of you, but both of us agreed that our student bodies often act in a very low class sort of way, which is true. Uh, and I tried to raise the ante a little bit by buying a shirt that didn't scream with the hillbilly on the front or, you know, a jug of liquor or something like that. But I do have to say, if Bill loses again this fall, then this is what he's going to get. So hang on just one second. All right. What? Uh, You need to share a screen? No, just, 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 just for a second. So we have, this is this is the real shirt here. And this would be the hat that he gets. He gets this hat to wear with the shirt. So it's got to have West Virginia. So he won't get such a low key sort of thing. He'll have to wear this. I don't know what, he probably has a turkey hat for me to wear. So keep that in mind, oh, that's what I, I, I've I'm got something gave me this, very similar and I wear that. it just yes. a special occasion. So. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fix you right up, Josh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's gonna be fun. John, I didn't realize you were related to Daniel Bone. Yeah. How come we can't see you, Reggie? You would look good with that hat. I'll let He's you He's driving. He's it, driving. It, it'd be a warm thing for your, your pate. I thought it was Davy Crockett. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I think I had a hat like that when I was uh, in uh, kindergarten. I, I did. Well, some of us did. Everybody watched Fess Parker. He was David yes. Crockett, right? That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Right. I may have it. From, maybe I've kept it. I don't know where I got that hat. But anyway. Killed him a bear when he was only three. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. It's a whole lot easier carrying a, a dead squirrel on your head than <laughs> if your mascot had been a tiger or something like that. <laughs> Try and put a tiger on top of your hat would be, or top of your head would be, uh, I think, a little difficult. It's a coon, a not, a, a, coon, a, not a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else have some jabs? Go ahead, Bill. Stram. So I have a suggestion uh, on the, uh, the art raffle, and that is uh, you mentioned advertising. So it would probably be a, a good idea to uh, put this out so all the other clubs within uh, the Rotary District know that we do this. Uh, real simple to do. So that's just a suggestion. Yeah, yeah. that's a good idea. Might get and, some they, and they may not buy tickets as well. So. Oh, yeah. And, and we always do that. Um, but thanks again, Bill, for reminding us. And what this demonstrates to me is everybody has bought in on this. It's a great idea. So be thinking about it and keep the good ideas coming because you're going to be very involved in selling these tickets, remember, when we, uh, we do launch. So we'll keep you informed. And thanks again, Bill. Yeah, one, one thing for uh, the rest of the membership, there, there is a theme here. Most of these pieces of artwork are um, themed around the Chesapeake Bay area and scenic um, scenes from the Chesapeake Bay area, the wetlands and so forth. So there, I, I can show you one real quick here. Hang on. While he's doing that, they're all Eastern Shore artists. 
and uh, as and that's beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Nice. So um, there are people. There are people not just here, but all over the country who have some roots. Maybe they've lived on the eastern shore and they kind of miss it. So kind of expanding on uh, what Bill Strand said. Maybe we can kind of push this across the whole United States um, as far as Rotary goes. Um, people who feel a little homesick for this area may want to buy some raffle tickets too. The good thing about these pieces of art is unlike the uh, golf cart, it, it would be much easier to ship these somewhere if we, if we need to. Are we going to use some uh, unknown artists also? Because they are also in desperate need of a solution to their... Oh, you want to answer that? Hello? Uh, yeah, we hear you. That, that wasn't a part of the plan, but, but um, it's another good idea. Um, if uh, somebody has a piece of art, we'll, you know, we'll throw it in there. It won't hurt. Because I think the more pieces of art we have, the better. So Stan, thanks for that idea. Uh, Stanley, get out your easel and um, you're you're an unknown <laughs> Eastern Shore artist and make a. I'm, I'm painting as I'm painting as we uh, as we speak. I I got my pen. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Bill, so, one, one thought is uh, I think some of these uh, gifted art pieces are going to be prints. There are a number of uh, businesses <laughs> on the shore who do framing. And maybe we could get one of them to volunteer to it was as one of the items in the auction a free framing up to a certain dimension of a print. Another great idea. Yeah. yeah another great idea, Randy. I'll get back to you on that because I, I I'd like to put a little flesh on those bones. Randy, that was Chuck. No, it was oh, Rand that was Randy. Right. Okay. Um, anybody else? Uh, we're kind of free, free, free willing here with ideas and any questions you may have. And uh, if you have any questions, what we what I discussed as far as meeting in person again, you can ask any questions about that as well. Um, but anybody else want to speak up? Chuck, I want to address the the fact in terms of of the Rotary advertising itself in the community. I noticed that in the in the town sign, the community logo is hardly visible. Maybe we ought to have some cleanup project about the logo so it will be viewed clearly. I think that's a good idea too. And if you can, um... You know, you don't have to jump right on it, but if, if you have some particular areas, yeah, just kind of okay. notate it to us. Is the problem the sign is just old and dull and maybe we need a new sign? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so why don't we buy a big new rotary sign? Can we afford it, Paul? Uh, well, yeah, we can afford it. Um, you're gonna, it, it's right now, I think on a, on a sign that belongs to the town uh, on on property owned by the town, um, I think we'll probably have to get the town's permission if we want to get a bigger sign and 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 change it out. Right now, it's all, all sort of flying under the radar. Just I'm thought. thinking we could probably mount it ourselves. Still need the town's permission to put it on their yeah. property. Well, we, yeah. we've got, we're just replacing it. We're not. Good. It probably still would be a good idea to go through the town and say, hey, we got this. We want to do, get their okay on it. Hey, look, the town is not going to take, but you know my attitude about this. No, but the, the town yeah, I know. has measurement requirements. Oh, uh, that Jack is just like you guys. Sign you want to because you're a real thing. Okay. Jack is a rule follower. You're not. The point is, <laughs> the point is, Betty's got a great idea. Yeah. And, and we ought to get a new sign and, and, and get all the permissions we need. Yes. All right. 
Um, Bill or whomever else may have some quick contacts with the town manager or whatever. Um, can we get the okay to, to do, I would prefer to get the okay. Just, hey, we're planning on changing out sign. Any problem with that? If they say no, we're a go, we'll get it done. You're talking to Stram, right? Bill Stram would be fine too. Stram's I think the one. Yes. So, um, yeah, you could either contact John Hosey or Julie Pruitt. So, um, Julie Pruitt now is the deputy operations. We were asking you to do it. We. John and I are on good speaking terms, but, but you're the big guy in town. Yeah, if you can just quickly lay it in front of them, what we want to do. And so we just want yeah. to replace the sign. It's all that. That's that's what we're yeah. saying. Okay. Yeah, maybe make it a little bigger. I don't know if it comes any bigger than that. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're probably right. <laughs> you have to sign up. You just have to ask. But we could put flashing lights on it. Uh, I'll, I'll take that on. All right. Thanks, Bill. Ah, thanks, Bill. Dave Kabler, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so, you know, getting the word out on this is really important, and signage is a good way, but um, I haven't heard any uh, discussion about electronic media, uh, social media, website. I mean, you know, if, if we had some electronic uh, presentation on this that, all of us could use to share via email, via text, via uh, Facebook. Um, you know, uh, for instance, you know, we have a Rotary Facebook page that I don't think, I think needs some updating, but um, you know, if you really want thousands of people to see what we're, you know, what this opportunity represents, um, that's the way to get the word out. Um, uh, David, that's in the plan. In fact, uh, Jim Rich is going to develop a website for us. Yeah. So, so we will have an electronic um, social media play in the um, art raffle uh, communication. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, David. I kept track and, and I get messages through the Facebook page but very few of them. I may get one or two hits every week and that's about, that's high. So you can have it out there on Facebook, but if people just don't come in and visit it, you know, they're not gonna see what's there. No, uh, the point is, is if it's on Facebook, we can share it. And so and all of us that are on Facebook can actually use that to get the word out. It's, it's, you know, it's much better. I mean, it's much more than just putting it on our Facebook page. Is it? so it's all about how we disseminate it. That's and also I'm I'm kind of curious as to how it's all going to work. So that you know how you know I think anyone who buys a ticket to this is going to want to know what the uh, rules are. You know, um, if you've got six pieces of art um, and we're going to raffle them off. Uh, does each ticket holder get six chances to well, win? Well, we're, we're working on that, and, and Rick Hubbard has come yeah, up so. with a good idea, but but I'm I don't want to get into that just yet. But we are no, looking at our options. I'm just pointing that I'm just pointing that out that that'll be really an important message. People need to understand exactly how it works. Absolutely. So. Well, I the, the 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 raffle basket that recently concluded for the library is a good format to use for the art raffle. Yeah, I agree with you, Maddie. Yeah. So so uh, to take that one step further for what Dave said, um, you have Jim Rich uh, reach out to uh, Karen Zamorski at Cape Charles Main Street, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> she uh, we we have a. There is a the Cape Charles Main Street uh, web web page which yep. does a lot of the marketing for the town, and we can it can be put on there. Plus, on the Cape Charles Main Street's Facebook page and Instagram. Yeah, um, great. Yeah, Thank, think, thanks, Bill. I think Matty will will back me up on this, but we really did have a lot of help from the local merchants 
with the food basket getting the word out. So working through the local merchants uh, really helps too. And that's more word of mouth than, than web pages and so forth and putting signs up in their stores. Okay. Go ahead, Paul. No, I just I'm don't want us to run out of time. No. You, you, you can go sit. You, no, you go second, Jackie. time before we do happy dollars yeah um all right i do want to do happy dollars jackie real quick what what did you want to bring up i have a question go ahead or a comment no, money no no, this is not happy dollars. Every male on here got a chance to speak. I would like to speak. Medi spoke. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm omitted, omitted. But here's the point. When you guys have meetings one hour before our meeting, is that an executive committee meeting? That's a board meeting. Oh, that's a board meeting. Yeah, yeah. But the board meeting's open. Okay, so I would like to receive information from that committee about what took place in the board meeting. We don't get any idea what you discuss in that meeting. It's like a cobble, just you guys. And plus, you don't have one female on that, in that board meeting. It's all a perspective from men. And I'm not putting men on the spot. I just think you need to have a diversity. I think we have a director at large there, Jackie, uh, that you might want to take me in on. No, I yeah. don't. I don't want to be here. I just want to. Now she just wants to raise hell. Jackie doesn't want to be <laughs> Paul has spoken to me about being trained to be a tra the treasurer to replace him. Yeah. So I would probably get on that committee anyway, should I replace him. So you need to find somebody else. But there needs to be diversity and inclusion on the well, board. And could I could, could I answer Jackie? The yeah, uh, yeah. we always do report back in the assembly meetings what the board has been talking about and what the board has decided. That was the, all of the discussion about future meetings. Okay, yeah. that, that, but that's something that's been, you all have discussions that we don't know about. You do. No, we don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> like, All right, so, so, don't worry. I'll sit in on the meeting. Okay. <laughs> okay, Jack, Jackie, you're welcome to attend the meeting. You can sit with Bill when he's attending and so forth. You're welcome to. And um, as far as diversity goes, we have had ladies part of the board of directors and even as I believe president. President, yes. Sure, so you can always of course cite we one case. Okay, Jackie. You don't know. Don't, what are you talking about? Yeah, well, you talk all the time. Well, Your job is you. We had Monica Bridgeforth was uh, part of the board of directors. She was also the recording we, secretary. When he's I president. Joined. One woman. Yeah, That's one president. woman. No, it's not true. We've had oh, Mary was on the board. Was, no. was We've had several women. Several Sheila women. Burge was president. I just want you all to keep that in mind. This is not an all-male organization. Okay, Jackie, um, you're correct. You are welcome to join any board of directors meeting. Um, so sit sit in with Bill when he logs in and you're in. All right. Um, I, I want to move. Go ahead, John Burris. I just want to say, to as to Jackie, as a former board member, I was constantly defending, trying, they were trying to kick you out of the club, so they kicked me off the board. So <laughs> you're on your own now. That's how the cabal really works. <laughs> I was the only one who spoke up for you. Everybody else wanted you out. Right? <laughs> I, I guess we had our guests. Let's go to Happy Dog. All right. And, and that, was it. that was even oh, before she was a member. Speaking, speaking of happy dollars, uh, let's do that right now, Bill. All right. I know Jackie's happy now because she's going to be sitting in on the next board meetings. So uh, how about some hands? Who's happy? I can't see everybody's picture. So it's I'm, I'm happy, uh, Chuck. All right, Bill. Go ahead, Bill Payne. Um, I'm happy $10 worth, $5 because... I'm happy that that uh, Celia Burge is going to be okay. 
Uh, John didn't tell you, you tell us that uh, she's kind of ran into the COVID virus, but she's doing okay, but I'm $5 worth of her getting better real soon and permanently fast. The other $5 is because our water main broke on Friday and we got water back again today. So ha oh. happiness is... <laughs> Happiness is Bill taking a shower. Yeah, happiness is Bill <laughs> taking a shower. <laughs> uh, okay, I think, uh, go ahead, Bill Murphy. Oh, well, I've already, I've already given the reason, but I've got five happy dollars because my good friend thought enough of me to buy me a new shirt. All right. And then uh, Al Paschal, I think I saw your hand go up. Yeah, you did. I have 20 happy dollars. A friend of mine was seriously ill, uh, actually has recovered very well from a stroke. And so I'm really, really happy that uh, that she's on the mend and she's All doing right. really well. That's great news. Why are you heading south? Oh, I did. I just got back last oh, night. Okay. Oh, OK. OK. How'd it go? It went well. I got to swim on Saturday, but only the preliminary swim because on Sunday, this gigantic storm blew through. So they had to cancel the main swim. So yeah, I did about right. a mile. I did about a mile and a half instead of three. No, well, that's good. Um, I want yeah, half, I I half my money back. <laughs> <laughs> I see another storm's brewing down there right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Um, any more happy dollars? Go ahead, John Burris. I just want to make the record clear. Uh, Sheila has a woman in her office who tested positive for COVID. We've been in self-isolation for about four days now, and we don't have any symptoms. I'm hoarse because of the medicine I'm taking, but I I'm, I'm feel fine. And uh, I want to put in $10 uh, <clears throat> for Bill being such a, a good guy to go along with this and wear the shirt. And, and, and hopefully something better will happen. My Mountaineers got drubbed this weekend, <laughs> men and women. So... Uh, I have very little to celebrate in regard to the Mountaineers, except Murphy wearing the shirt. So I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's doing that. Okay, so that's a total of 10, right? Right. Okay. Anybody else? I want to, to put $5, not because I'm happy, but but to memorialize my, my mother's birthday on January 26th and my father's death on January 25th. Wow, if you don't mind me asking, how, how old will your mom be? Well, my mom would have been 90-something. Wow, that's great. Happy birthday to her. Yeah. All right, any more? I'm sorry, Mitty, how much was it? It was $5. Did you give $5. $5. Okay, any more happy dollars? All right. Well, we're right about at that point, Bill, where we're going to go ahead and wind things up for the day. And thank you all for joining today. It's good to see you. Rick, good to see you too. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Thank you, sir. All right. Excellent. Everybody else okay in your family? Yes. Great. Okay, Bill. All right. As far as the things we think, do, and say, as Rotary remembers, number one. Is it the truth? Is it number two? Fair Charles. Number three? Goodwill and better friendships. Four? And Stan, you're on. Will we have fun? Yes, we will. You bet we will. Okay, everybody enjoy your day. Get outside a little bit. A little cold, but it's a nice day. Take care, everybody. Adios. Bye. Bye. Bye.